Hello, everybody. I hope you all had a lovely weekend. So today is our first day of our new schedule. So it's our very first Tech Tuesday. Woo! So before we begin, a couple of very quick things. First, why am I shifting this schedule around? Why am I suddenly introducing technical theater when I've been doing monologues for two months? Well, there's a couple reasons for that. The first is an esoteric teaching reason. The second is a personal one. And I'll start with the personal one first. I love monologues. I love Shakespeare. Don't get me wrong, but I've done Shakespeare pretty much every day for the last two months, and I'm A, sort of starting to run out of good monologues, and B, kind of getting a little bored of some of it. So I'm narrowing it down and kind of making sure that it's just... It's the best of the best. I'm doing one, two a week, one on Monday, one on Friday. And that'll help keep me involved and invested, which, again, I'm human. I burn out, too. The other reason, and the more important kind of esoteric teaching reason, is this. I personally believe that in order to be an effective theater person, you need to have an understanding of what goes into all aspects of theater. I personally believe that every single person who is an actor needs to spend a show working just tech. Not acting with some help on the sets and stuff outside of rehearsal. I mean, literally, you need to be one of the people backstage doing the, the movement of things. You need to be somebody who has been part of the build process from day one. That's what I mean. Second, I think every technician needs to get on stage and pre play guard number five or Hamlet, whatever their talent and comfort, and comfort allows. Because, and I speak this from experience, when I was a kid... Uh, I definitely noticed in one of, in my school that there was a big divide. The techies didn't trust really the actors to do anything. The actors all thought the techies just showed up the last week and just kind of did their own thing. And it's not okay. And I think that really and truly the best way to be a good theater person is to have as much knowledge as you possibly can. Even if you eventually just specialize and become one or the other. Most people, in fact, Almost all people do, but it's important to have that basic. So now that that's out of the way, let me explain what we're going to be doing on Technical Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're going to be looking at all of the areas of design, all of the things that technicians and the people who are not on stage performing take care of. Things like the sets, the lights, the sounds, the costumes, the props, the hair, the makeup, all of these things that are not just the person performing. So let's talk about the process of that. So, as I mentioned, there are a bunch of different areas, but they are broke down into four major sections of technical theater. Set, lights, sound, costumes. Everything falls under one of those four, and we're going to talk about each one of those individually in videos moving forward. Now, I will point out there is a longer, about 20-some-odd minute video on my channel that does go into all of these areas in brief. However, we're going to be going much more in-depth and actually kind of showing some examples along the way on our future videos. But today we're going to focus on the design process because this is something that is the same across all disciplines. So let's take a look at the theater hierarchy. In a professional show, you have a producer, the person who is putting up the money for the show. The producer hires a director, the person who's going to actually put the show together. Now, depending on the place and depending on the producer, the director either will hire a team of designers or the producer will give the director a team of designers to work with. At community theater and non-professional level theater, generally it's whoever happens to be the volunteers that do these things. You tend to see community theaters use the same set designers and lighting designers and sound designers and costume designers over and over and over because they're people that enjoy it and are able to volunteer their time to do it. But regardless of how you get these teams together, it is a team with the director at its head as the captain. The director is going to come in with a vision, an idea for the show. An example of this using our favorite Shakespeare, Hamlet, is the last production of Hamlet I did. The director put uh, our show in 1970s United States in the Reagan administration, so in the White House. So that gives the designers a world which with which to work with. Now, the director gives that concept. Concept is the idea is is the, this idea that they come in with. They give that concept to the designers, and the designers take that and do their research. As a designer, you must research. You're not going to know everything right off the bat. As you become more proficient as a designer, 
you'll have a treasure trove of things to pull from. But when you're first starting out, you know, your Google image search and your Google searches are your friend in this, where you're going to look up things, you know, as a set designer using that 1970s, you're going to look up what did the Oval Office look like in 1970 with Ronald Reagan as president? What were some of the things that they would have handled or sat on? How did the desks and chairs look? The phones? What kind of colors were present? That's the kind of stuff you look up. And what you're going to do as a designer is you build all that, you build that research, you get your concept in your head, your concept working under the director's concept, and you present that to the director and the other designers. And you have a discussion about that. And the director and the other designers and you work together to figure out what's going to work in the overall scheme of the show. Now, real quick piece of advice to all of you who might be starting out as designers. Think big. Go for the big ideas during this initial stage because if you don't go big here, it's going to be very hard to bring out any big ideas later. So start out with the big pie in the sky. You would hope and pray and dream you'll get it ideas at this initial stage. And then be prepared to have a lot of those things removed. But bring them in because you never know what the director is going to go, oh, I love that too. So you present that idea, you narrow it down, you get it all down, and then the real solid meat of the work is done. The research goes by pretty quickly, actually, in my experience. But then you actually put together the bones, the meat of things. This is the stage where you are drawing up plans, figuring out exact coloring and how you're going to hang those lights, what songs, what sounds are going to be used, uh, what fabrics you're going to need to purchase. You put together all those things, you draw out all of the finalized pictures and designs, and that then goes to the director again for any final approvals. And once that's done, then the build happens. So the designers do a lot of stuff at the front end, especially at the professional level. At the professional level, they do all of this work at the front, hand, and then hand it off to the builders, the carpenters, the electricians, the costume, the sewers. Those people get these plans and are then told to just kind of put them together, and the designers leave and go do another show. In the community world and in the, the middle school, high school, college, community theater, non-professional theater world, those designers are then going to stick around and then do the work themselves or help do the work and oversee the process in a lot more of a, in a, in a lot deeper fashion. So that's kind of our process. We start out with our initial idea, then our finalized, uh, finalized designs, then the build. And that's the three major steps. So starting on Thursday, we're going to be looking at how each of those processes work in each of the three areas of design. We're going to start on Thursday with the area I am most comfortable with, which is set design. And uh, we'll, we'll see you then. Bye.